Hi folks, welcome to my first video on Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, the game where you are the Soviet government and you control absolutely everything. In this game, you control where people live, where they work and how they get to work, what amenities they'll have and what resources you develop. And you decide whether you'll export or import things like coal, fuel, and electricity. This could very well be the ultimate supply chain management game. After playing for about 50 hours, I can share some insights as to what I've learned about this intriguing game. And to do that, we'll have to take a look behind the Iron Curtain. Let's get started. Smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Or just give it a thumbs up for yourself so that you'll always be able to come back and watch it again if you need to. The first thing you'll encounter in this game are the tutorials. And there are 10 of them. 3Division, the developers of this game, have put a massive effort into the tutorials. Everything from the basics to getting resources, construction, electricity and fuel, and much more. And as I understand it, as of the date of production of this video, Workers and Resources Soviet Republic is still considered an early access version of the game. So I take my hat off to the developers of this game for doing so much work into the tutorials. The next thing I want to highlight is the map. It is absolutely massive. And in the bottom right hand corner is the mini map. The mini map has a little icon here that shows you where you are and helps you navigate around the entire map very quickly. What I like to do is make the map is a little bit larger. And you can see here these little gray or black spots. Those are my towns that I already have set up. But what's also very important about the mini map is it helps you find resources such as coal, iron, oil, uranium ore, and bauxite. And if you want to move around quickly on the map, all you have to do is highlight the location on the mini map and it'll take you right over there. And if you want, you can make the map smaller, the little mini map, or you can get rid of it altogether. The next thing I want to talk about is resources. So this is where I've established my first city. And why did I establish my first city here? Well, if you click on the mini map and go to coal, you'll see here that that little A-shaped icon is right over top of this city. And that little red blob underneath it shows me that there's coal here. And coal, of course, is an important resource in terms of generating power. Coal supplies the power plants. So here you can see I've got a coal mine. And right next to it and next in the supply chain is a coal processing plant. And I'll just close those up. The next thing I have in that supply chain is a large aggregate storage. From there, large aggregate storage is connected to my coal plant. And also, I have a train aggregate loading here. You can see a train coming in now. And actually, I have two trains. One's already loading, and this one's just waiting. And although I've only started to skim the surface of this game, you can see how the whole supply chain management concept is a big part of playing this game. The next thing I want to talk about is power. Providing power is one of the first problems you encounter in this game. And as I've already talked about, I have a whole coal processing process that supplies coal to this plant. But when you first start, it's kind of like a chicken and the egg problem. The coal mine and associated buildings need power to operate, but the coal plant needs coal to start off with. So how do you get started? Well, the answer is you have two choices. One, you can click on the coal plant and you can actually purchase a little bit of coal if you wish by using either dollars or rubles and you can purchase as I've done some coal and that'll help you get started that's one option to get your plant going the other option is to import energy from an outside connection 
And if we follow these high voltage lines, I'll take you all the way down to that outside connection that I have right now. This particular outside connection has roadway connections, rail, and also electricity. So as you can see, I've attached railways to this connection so I can both import and export goods. I also have high voltage wires making a connection to this electrical grid, which allows me to both import and export electricity. The next thing I want to touch on is housing. You decide what housing to provide your citizens and where and when to build that housing. In general, I've started off with high capacity flats that can house a lot of workers. To build additional housing, you go to construction, you go to the residential buildings, and you choose the residential building type that you prefer at that particular time. So I'll select this one as an example and put it over here. You can see the roadway connections in green and you can see the power connection in yellow. And you left click and I've built myself some new housing. You can also transport your people by bus, private car or train, which leads me to my next topic, transportation. At this point, I'm not very advanced when it comes to transportation. In terms of transporting people, they're either walking or they're going by bus. In order to purchase vehicles, you have to first buy and place a road depot like this one here. And once you've done that, you simply click on the depot and you purchase either by rubles or dollars. So I'll purchase by rubles. For example, you would click on the bus that you want and now you've bought a bus and it's sitting there but it hasn't moved yet so now you have to actually set up the bus route that you want so you do that by double clicking on the vehicle and then you hit the little plus sign now I'll just move this down and you select or highlight and then left click on your first stop and then you go over to your second one and highlight that and then you're still not done you've got to hit the start button. Now if I hit the little I, you'll see that bus is on its way now. The next thing I want to talk about is services and amenities. You decide what services and amenities you provide your citizens. In this particular case, this building is a fire station, which is going to come in handy if I ever have a fire. But you also can provide sporting and other types of cultural buildings. So for example, if I click on construction and go to equipment for citizens, you can buy grocery stores, small stores, and so on. And down here is a tennis playground, a pub, and a football playground. So those are examples of some of the amenities that you would supply to your citizens. In my case, although I'm making money, each building is giving me a caution symbol. So if I actually click on a building, I get a caution symbol and there's this whole list of issues or problems that I've yet to work out. So you can see that although I've started a game, I'm not very sophisticated yet in terms of dealing with all the issues that go along with having a Soviet Republic. Well, in conclusion, I've still got a lot to learn when it comes to workers and resources Soviet Republic. I have to say it's a fairly complex supply chain management simulation game, but I think that the complexity is what will keep you coming back for more. Every time you solve one problem, there just seem to be like a whole bunch more issues to work out to get a fully functioning society. Overall, there's just so much of this game, I can't even begin to do this game justice in a short video like this. Have you played Workers and Resources Soviet Republic? What do you think of the game? Is it perhaps the ultimate supply chain management game? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. Click on that box in the bottom left hand corner right now to see a video you're almost guaranteed to love. This video was selected just for you by YouTube. And they know what you like. So what are you waiting for? Click on that box now, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video.